Hello there, yes, we took a break. That is a one day break. Because, well, it was, my voice is killing me. But now we're back on Legs Up Radio for this reading of blogs. Last time we checked, we were in Hidden in the Trees, written by Lizard Bite. Blah, 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 lizard Bite. And Steward had just talked to Ace about a philosophical thing, and there was a pretty clever discussion there. That's what I remember anyway. So, here we go. An invitation. I met a strange man in the woods today. He wore a really odd-looking clown mask and didn't utter a word, just gave me a piece of paper and walked away. Ordinarily, I'd question such things, but given that he walked with an odd looseness, as if some external force was controlling his limbs, I think I can hazard a pretty good guess as to who he's working for. On the paper were written three things. A time, a location, the words, meet the doll. Well, this ought to prove interesting. Stupid. That wasn't my best reading. No comments. Get control, control these wires everywhere. An eventful morning. It was a diner, and I arrived as soon as I was able. It was fairly early, and I walked in with Gloria Sansadia right behind me, scanned the area, and immediately recognized the, these three figures. Well, okay, one figure, but it was easy to deduce the identities of her two companions because I actually read, read information that was, uh, or I actually read information that's made public to me. Seriously, Peter, aren't you some sort of secret agent or whatever? How did you not figure out who she was? Is. As. Anyway, I walked over to Char I walked over to Charlotte, Hunter, and Peter, and promptly introduced myself. Oh yes, Hunter. Who his blog is the Hunter by Cute Without the. I might do a reading of this blog eventually, just for the hell of it, because I will admit I, the Hunter, I admire the Hunter. I do admire it for being such a long and rather interesting, but there's an interesting character development to it. There's a, interesting arc to it and like it's got a nice style what else is there Peter I'm pretty sure this will be still remains within which was yeah this is a blog I haven't read in a while Hello all, my name is Peter Rivers. Was Peter Rivers. I work for an organization titled Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Arts Club Band. We do good things for people in awful situations caused by things I like to call elementals. <laughs> this is a freaking trip down memory lane right here. Sometimes you have to get a bit confrontational, such as tonight. See, we have cornered an elemental we have titled the Harlequin or the Wooden Girl. What? When was this written? Aren't you? Are you sure? Two other elementals have also shown up, too. We're going to be on the offensive this time. We have a lot at stake this time. Yeah, this is the very first fear blog. I believe so. I'm sure it used to look different than this. I'm sure that it's probably been rewritten or something. Because cute does rewrite things a lot. But anyway, that I will probably do the Hunter at some point. Might do some more of the Dying Man blogs, including Still Remains With It which I count as a dying man blog because I'm just generalizing here. But where was I? I don't think it was a rude introduction. I just said, Hello, my name is Steward. I don't believe we've met. That's not rude or offensive, is it? You'd think it was from the way they reacted. Really, they all went stiff, except for Charlotte, obviously. Remember her? The wooden girl's little puppet with a smile that is way too old for her? Well, you never, you never mentioned the smile before, I don't think. You, you mentioned her being you're seeming too old and all that, but you, you didn't mention the smile. Then Peter and Hunter pulled guns at me. Admittedly, there weren't many people in the diner, but the few who were there got real quiet. I gestured to those people. Really? I asked. That's how you say hello? You shoot me? In front of all these people? I think that kid over the, I think that kid over is like five. You'll scar him for life. Do you really want that on your shoulders? Get out! Peter told me. Now, take your little freaks and leave. I turned to Glorious Nasadia. Did you hear that? I asked. He called you circus folk. Well, actually, no, he called you freaks. But yeah, that's when Charlotte lunged. She had a knife in her hand and went straight for Peter's throat with it. Unfortunately, the bastard was fast, almost disturbingly so, and managed to not only dodge her, but also grab her and push her away. 
And it looked like the end had come for dear, for, yeah, for dear Charlotte when Hunter busted his little confused brain and tried to protect her from his ally. His only ally. You see, this is what happens when you don't communicate. Charlotte slipped away and gave me that, that too old smile. Hi, Stewie, she said. Remember me? Of course, I told her. How could I forget? You're creepy as fuck. She giggled. He he he. Hoo hoo hoo. There's a lot we need to discuss. Shall we? I nodded and opened up a gate to the path of black leaves. Take care of the two morons, I told my two associates and stepped out onto the path, Charlotte behind me. She told me a lot of strange things. Peter, did you know that your pocket watch is, in fact, the larval form of a god? Funny how that works, isn't it? Shame you lost it to this Hunter guy. And Hunter, shame you lost it to this Maxwell character. All re referring to things going on in the other vlogs. My readers may be wondering why I'm addressing dead people, so I might as well tell you. Glorious came back with a hole in his shoulder and Poppy collapsed. Asedia was shot in her thigh and is too hysterical to tell us whatever the hell happened. I guess I'll have to wait for one of the morons to blog about it. <laughs> I, I kind of, I like that. <laughs> I, I do like it when they make fun of the fact that we're just waiting for people to blog. <laughs> anyway. Oh, anyway. Anyway. Tonight we're heading to some graveyard. Apparently some cultists meet there or something. Cultists. Graveyard. Dead. Fuck. Fuck you, asshole. And what's with you changing what I really said? Oh gee, two people hear different things. I wonder how that happened. I thought you were supposed to be informed about these things, genius. Are you really incapable of making simple deductions? It was a fucking choir, Einstein. I know that. I just like to mess with you, slave. What? I, I don't understand... But this it kind of reminds me of Dave Strider... No, it reminds me of Dirk Strider from Homestuck. And how he pretty clearly gets corrected a lot. Well, not a lot. It happened like once. He gets corrected. And he's like, oh no, I was joking. There's no way you were joking. There's no reason for you to be joking. Just accept that you made a mistake. It's not a big deal. You just look like a tool when you make it sound like you're trying to mess with people. You're not trying to mess with people. Shut up. Anyway. And Slave, well, well, where did that come from? I mean... Like, I'm trying to comprehend why you would call him that. There's a lot of things you can call steward, but I don't think slave's one of them. I mean, that's what I, that's what you do to like an Archie follower, but you know, he's not even like the, the revenants are more like slendy slave things. But he's steward's doing it of his own will. That's not what a slave is. I know this stuff. It steward's more like a servant. A steward. Uh, but you can't count on Peter Rivers to say anything right. Really, though, why are they here, Slendy Freak? Don't your people keep tabs on each other? I assume they're here to attend the birth of a new god. Oh, but spoilers. Oh, look, crybabies. <laughs> Not like Yoda. <laughs> Note that my voice, my, the voices that I give to characters will have changed, because I don't remember what I gave the characters last time. No, me and my friend are going to stop that. Ta-ta for now, time to get some rest. Ah, the jester has invited you to an audience with the Queen of Threads. Be careful, you don't want you to get your strings around you. Thy mind awaits. Mr. Highmind, I regret to inform you that your comments have grown annoying. Go to hell. Go directly to hell. Do not pass go. Do not collect two hundred dollars. Anonymous, I regret to inform you that your comments have grown annoying. Go to hell. Thank you. Petey, shut up, you are pretentious as hell. I... Okay. Hang on. Hang on. It's a fair question, how will you stop a god? You're the guy who called the who called the I Corps pretentious. Now you're calling Peter Rivers pretentious. I mean, I will agree that Peter Rivers can get annoying, but I don't know about pretentious. I mean, he gets argumentative, which might give off the impression of being pretentious, but but I mean, he's he's arguing with Stewart. You I can't really blame him. You're just a dick. Anyway. 
Timberwolves. Na 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 Timberwolves. Timberwolves. Glorious and Sadie are still recovering, and Master has sent forth a command to aid Charlotte for the time being. Seems reasonable. Having a lot of humans trying to defy you is a big embarrassment, and Wooden Girl and Archangel are the only two allies Master currently has in the game. Plus, Slate's trail has gone cold anyway. So I spent some time among a group of Archangel cultists come drug dealers. What? I get confused by that so much, because I see that... Well, I, I see it very rarely. The word come in between things. I think it, it's supposed to... I think it means, like, the slash key, like, like Archangel Coldest slash drug dealers. Because I, I see it in other contexts occasionally, and, but I see it so rarely that, I, like, there's no point. And it's just, like, come means something completely different when spelled like that. So, just, uh, anyway. Come drug dealers, calling themselves the Timberwolves. Any of you who have managed to pick up my general personality and outlook don't need me to tell you that relations between me and them are strained at best. So basically, here's what's going on. Some guy with an asshole family named Peter has teamed up with some dickface with a dead family named Hunter, and now they're after some dumbass named Maxwell, who is also the former leader of the Timberwolves. Stole Peter's watch. Grammar? And now they're after some dumbass named P Maxwell stole Peter's watch. Oh, I see. You mean who stole Peter's watch? Okay. Said watch has many strange and supernatural properties because, as Charlotte informed me, it is not a watch at all, but rather the larval form of a new entity. Also, oh, they call them entities in this, I guess. Charlotte is here because the wooden girl wants a new entity to be born. The Timberwolves are here because the Archangel wants a new entity. I'm here because Master wants a new entity and I've got nothing better to do anyway. Also, we apparently have a pair of very inept investigators following us. They sought it with thimbles, which I have recently been informed has been uh, was written by a literator. I remember reading the first few posts of this. I remember loving. A ref, like an eat post. I think it was this. Was it, it Rutherf Rutherford? That's a Genesis name. So, yes. The lamb lies down, but it never lies down. The lamb lies down, but it never not lies down. Ooh, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> it feels like it have to be a song. The lamb lies down, but it never lies down. Mm. Yeah. Shot. So quick, so clean an ending? Oh, that was right, lad, but no. Well, I was brave. There's not an ill for mending, t'was best to take it to the grave. The crawlers cover the floor in the red ochre corridor. For my second sight of people, they have more lifeblood than before. The eager pack lifts up their pictures they carry all they lack. Oh, pictures, that's what the lyrics are. The liquid has congealed, which is eat up the crack. So. I like... See, see... I'm just randomly going back to this because it's been ages since I, I've never actually read this blog. I just remember reading this post and loving it because the literator made references to Genesis, just to just because he's a camper. But where was it? Uh, it's curious using the carpet crawlers there, because well, the carpet crawlers are very specific. I mean, the Lamb Lies Down is a very specific. The Lamb Lies Down on Broadway is a very specific story. It's it's very difficult to interpret I suppose but the carpet crawlers is I'm rambling I'm just I just find it funny that things are like this yeah I guess I could do that some other day I still haven't even read it so I should probably just read it at some point but yeah oh yeah and the Timberwolves have captured Maxwell he's in solitary confinement at the moment when the time comes we'll use him to birth a new entity I have to say the Timberwolves are fucking psychos there's this one guy Bill something who would not shut up about the Archangel Kept talking about how I'd avoided my fate, but the Archangel was going to come get me and I should embrace it and blah, blah, blah. And then, while I standing on the roof of the office of a cemetery where the crazy had set up camp, Bill comes over to me and says this. She was a hot one, that crystal chick. The great Archangel took her form and let me fuck her. Fucked her good. You know she had a really loose car. I pushed him off the building. His neck made a very satisfying sound when his head hit the sidewalk. 
I'm just silently nodding my head here. Because that was... I agree with you, Stuart. I agree with you, he was a dick. It's a lot of dicks in this fucking block. Ugh, that's just wrong on so many levels. Rude and wrong. Touched a nerve, did he? Of course, by killing him, you've only made Bill more joyful. Wait, the Archangel appears as dead people. He doesn't control their bodies. So this Bill guy slept with the Archangel. I just threw up a little there. Ha! <laughs> That's brilliant. That is br that, that, that brings a whole new significance to the to the interpretation of the Archangel of Sin and Rapture. It's just creepy. Uh, I, uh. Right. It takes necrophilia to a whole new level. Fat, fat, fat. Ah, <laughs> uh, fuckity fuck. Maxwell escaped. Took the fucking pocket watch and ran like hell. We're giving chase, obviously. The birth has to happen. There's only a narrow window of opportunity, or else we'll have to wait for the next cycle a hundred years from now. And no, there are no eclipses or comets or solstices or whatever involved. That would be silly. Ha ha. Who are the inept investigators now, huh? You, I believe. I'm sorry about Frank's comment. He's a little drunk. We always try to be polite, even to, you know, killers. You all bicker like children. Overly devoted farge. Do your jobs. Shut up. They don't bicker like children. How is that... I mean, like... I don't think children would even know what inept investigators meant. Like, I mean, I will admit the stu steward's reply was a bit... That, yes, it's a bit childish, yes, because... Because, like, in the context of this, uh, Stuart posts a post where he fucks up, so Baker and Bellman do actually have the right to say, to call him out for that, especially after his insult. Stuart, by this point, hasn't shown any progress in his investigations, so his retaliation isn't warranted. So, like, Baker and Bellman are kind of winning this one. So, Stuart is a little bit childish, yes, but that, at the same time, I don't blame him. This is his blog. He's allowed to reply like that. You're just a pretentious asshole. Anyway. How does this human just escape solitary? That's a good question. The birth of the god. Oh, this is a post that's much famous in the fear mythos. Because it's just famous. Fuck shit, fuck shit, fuck. This hurts like hell. The doctor wants me to rest, so I'll try to keep this brief. Well, as brief as I can, anyway. We managed to corner Maxwell at some amusement park called the Land of Make-Believe. The Timberwolves had him surrounded, so me and Charlotte headed for where they were. Glorious and Asadia were still out of commission. Maybe I, uh, maybe I wouldn't be lying in a doctor's bed if they hadn't been, but whatever. Along this way, I, I noticed a certain pair of traveling journalist wannabes trying, rather pathetically I might add, to hide behind the horses of a merry-go-round. I waved to them. Let it never be said that I am an overly rude man. I like that. Anyway, when we got to Maxwell, he was freaking out. A few Timberwolves were lying dead here and there, and Max was waving a gun around, pulling the trigger and fiercely releasing a series of clicking sounds. I guess they didn't bring enough ammo. Get away from me, he shouted. I have the watch! You stay away! Charlotte moved toward him. Well, glided towards him. It was like her body was suddenly lifted into the air by an unseen force, and her limbs went limp and sort of hung there, her wrists lifted as well. When she was a few feet away, she alighted on the ground and, and flicked her wrist at him. Maxwell struggled against a ma mass of invisible strings, and Charlotte calmly turned around and walked away. Max somehow managed to get the watch out, but sadly we shall never know what it is he intended to do with it. Because the watch sank into his skin like a rock sinks into a lake. Suddenly we were no longer alone. I saw Master emerge from the darkness, and I saw the wooden girl appear behind Charlotte. I saw a gas mask opposite of me, behind Maxwell. He looked at me, and temporarily shifted into Crystal's form, winking before returning to its more familiar shape. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw the grey shapes of the choir, for once not altering the sound around them. To my left the rake stood, hunched over with its claws rested on the ground and I could feel one more entity behind me, its gaze upon us all, though I didn't turn to, to see who, was, who stood there. The eye. I was too enthralled by the sight before me. Maxwell screamed, and his body contorted, and I could, uh, and I could his bones cracking. Gradually, his shrieks turned to gurgles, and the skin along his arms split apart, blood pouring from the wound as if it were being forced out. His shirt tore, and his chest after that. 
I heard and saw his ribs shatter as a mechanical creature clawed its way out of his body, its metallic joints creaking and groaning as it tore through, through Maxwell's flesh. Finally, what was left of Maxwell crumbled, uh, crumbled to the ground, and there above him was a creature of metal and machinery, assembled in a shape not unlike a human fetus, its small arms ending in two long knives. It seemed to float in a nearly invisible sphere, and extending from its stomach was a fleshy and no doubt organic umbilical cord. Manufactured newborn. That seems a good way to describe the new entity, wouldn't you say? The newborn shrieked, and then it was simply gone, along with all the other entities. No fanfare, no flash of light, no clap of thunder, just gone. That's when I saw three men standing off to the side. I don't know when they got here, but I recognized all three. Hunter, Peter, and Slate. About damn time I found that bastard. I didn't even hesitate. I rushed at Slate. He saw me coming and turned and ran through a door, and I gave pursuit. Ugh, doctor just injected me with something. Gotta end it here. Post what happened next later. Well, angels and men with horror may sing, offered to see the newborn king. What? No, this can't happen. The high mind awaits the young one. The high mind awaits. Awesome. I have a new respect for the manufactured newborn. Meh. You're a... Okay. Won't argue with that. The Servant and the Serial Killer. Okay. My head feels fairly clear. Sort of. Clear enough. Anyway, my last post ended with me chasing Slate into the empty city. So here's what happened next. Ended up in the middle of a city park. Like Central Park, only it wasn't in New York and was therefore much nicer. Oh! I couldn't see Slate anywhere. It was night. It nightish, all things considered. And, and he had slipped away into the shadows. I began walking around looking for him. I heard something move behind me and spun around. Slate's form was retreating into a heavily forested area, and I wasn't about to lose him when I spent a, when I spent a week see, searching America's toilet for that bastard. I gave chase. I'm not sure how long I ran through those trees, but eventually they thinned out, and I burst out of the woods only to be met by a very tall building. I turned around to see the trees shifting away and more buildings growing from the ground. The grass and dirt beneath my feet melted into pavement, and soon I was in the center of an empty metropolis. I walked through the streets of the empty city, my eyes scanning every crack, every alleyway. Slate was in here somewhere, hiding. I didn't mean to, I heard a voice say, though from the way it echoed I couldn't tell where it was coming from. Those people. I killed them, and I don't even know why. I heard something scrape to my right, and I sp and spun to face the mouth of an alley. I drew the pistol I had been keeping tucked to my belt. Just woke up and felt like I needed to. Never met them before. Just knew that they needed to die. And I felt I needed to come here. I needed to stop something. But I failed. The gun held out in front of me. I began walking toward the alley. Never failed before. I entered the alley. My head aches so much. I need to stop it. But it's already happened. Step by step, I drew closer to the sound. But there's something else. I couldn't see a thing, but I knew I was close. You have to die. A gunshot echoed through the alley, and I looked down to see my weapon laying at my feet, my hands clutching in my stomach, trying futilely to hold the blood in. I heard a click as Slate prepared for the second attack. I fell backward, using the last ounce of my strength to reach out to the empty city and show what matches mark upon my being, and treat it to... A door opened behind me, and I plummeted through it. The next thing I remember is waking up in a bed in some back alley doctor's office with Glorious and Asedia standing over me. Heh. <laughs> Guess I did something useful after all. Thanks. I shouldn't feel sorry for you, but I do feel a little bit. You didn't point us out when you could have, and for that I am grateful. Must be lucky to use looking glass for traveling. You never have to pay for gas, that's for sure. And I gave her a really deep voice. Progress. Been bedridden far too long. Doc says that I shouldn't be up, but Master is a good health plan. Death's matching Slate's M.O. have appeared in the mountains of Tennessee. Heading there now. <laughs> Stewie feels hurt a little. Do you like it? Do you love it? Can you pick it up and dance it to a nice beat with it? Are you still alive, Joseph? If so, what do you live for? At the heart, deep down under every motivation, each every leaf unturned, what do you live for? Not who, what? Step, step, step. Keep walking down your chosen path. May it lead you onwards. I need to read your blog as well. Tennessee. Come on, Slate. You can't keep this up forever. Surely you know this. Every town you pass through, you leave a mark behind. And it's not a particularly difficult one to miss, e to miss either. 
someone lying in a hotel room or an alley or against a tree with a big old gash in their throat. Mass massacre! Uh, mask, masked massacre. You're leaving a trail of corpses in your wake. All we have to do is follow it. We're gonna catch up to you soon, Slate. No matter what. I'm certain you know this, and yet you make it all so obvious. What could possibly compel you to such folly? I look forward to finding out. C compulsions are strange things. What compels some people to stay in the same place while others keep moving? But as Falstaff said, play out the play. Sounds to me like a trap, but far be it for me to warn you of an obvious trail. Did anyone ever tell you that you have anger management issues? Where did he show anger management issues in this? I mean, I, I will agree with you that he probably that he does, but he didn't show them in this post. I think this is one thing I don't like about comments. They tend to be stupid. I'm breaking the pattern. Loading. Loading. Followed the trail of bodies to Gatlinburg. Two recent deaths in the Great Smoky Mountains, and one of them doesn't fit the pattern. Oh, he was killed the same way, yes, but he wasn't one of Master's servants. This is the first person Slade has killed who wasn't one of us, and, and as such, it has sparked my interest. After a bit of investigating, we found that the dead man had a, had a fondness for hiking, and frequented a certain park in particular. Needless to say, we'll be visiting that park tomorrow. The witch. Went hiking early this morning. Very early, like midnight early. We went wa yeah, we went walking around the woods in the area when that the anomalous victim had liked the hike. Turned out that someone w uh, turns out that someone was waiting for us. I can't read today, Jesus. At first, I thought it was a plague doctor. Black cloak, beak, humanoid appearance. But as it came closer, I realized it was a pale blonde woman wearing nothing but a cloak of black feathers and a very large bird skull. Thunder cracked above us as she approached, and I could feel the tips of my fingers tingling from the electricity in the air. I looked up and saw blackness above. No stars, no moon. A storm was coming. The woman halted a few feet before us and said nothing. Just stood there. Glorious took a step forward toward her, surprisingly cautiously, and stopped abruptly when she let her cloak fall to the ground. I won't lie and, and say she didn't have a beautiful body. She didn't have a beautiful body. Once it might have been. But it was so covered in scars and scabs that anything enticing about it had long since been eradicated. I shot my flashlight on her and realized with a start that the scabs were moving. Tiny little beaks burst out of the woman's flesh, and birds clawed up at there out of her what, what? and birds clawed there out of her body. Thunder cracked again, and this time when I looked up it wasn't storm clouds I saw. Birds. Thousands upon thousands of birds covering the sky, the beating of their wings a source of the thunder. I stood before the convocation. The woman, obviously one of the convocation's nests, spoke, and her voice was a scratchy, hellish, wi he hellish whisper. They have been attacked by your killer, and they are angry. He hides, but they shall find him. Oh. Fuck. The anomalous death? A nest. One of the convocation's servants. Seems Slate had begun to branch out into other entities' domains, and now he's pissed off the convocation. Hiding in the Great Smoky Mountains with, with quite possibly every bird for miles after his blood? You know what I'd do in that situation? Because I'm pretty sure Slate will do the same thing. I've called it a bunch of hallowed and I've stationed them around the empty city, in every area that seems to have any correspondence whatsoever to the Smokies. Still, that's anywhere from three to three million miles, depending on the city's mood, to cover, but with little luck, we may be able to catch Slate when he ma makes his escape. And hopefully we'll get him before the complication does. If he has any sense, he, he probably hopes that too. Found Slate. Going there now. Okay. Shit, fuck shit. Twenty fucking hours stuck in that fucking city. Food, shower, and rest now. I'll tell you what happened later. But the gist of it is, Slate's dead, or may as well be. Rotten hell, you fucking proxy bastard. At Spike, they don't believe in hell. Well, yeah, I know you're right. They don't. But they believe in rapture. Ho, ho, ho. Slate was right. It's watching me. I see it right there. Outside. Never blinking. Gaze always following me. It sees. It judges. The magician's last trick. Calm now. Rested. That thing is gone now. I'm ready to explain. When I arrived in the empty city, I could see birds flying in the sky. 
so the convocation was there. How lovely. I wasted no time in heading for where the Hallard had captured the slate, partly because I needed to be there before the convo noticed, and partly because I had no idea when the city would shift itself next. It seemed to be a bakery, though there was no food in it, of course. Three hallowed held slight against the, mo against the wall. A fourth was lying on the ground a few feet away, and I sticking out of his throat. Slate seemed to have given up, but when he saw me, he started struggling and screaming. You! You sent it, didn't you? It's followed me since that night. What is it? Well, needless to say, I was perplexed by his words, and I wasted no time in informing him that I had sent nothing after him. I spent most of my time trying to find him myself. It had to be you. The eye watches me. It watches. My name is John Kramer. My favorite color is blue. My favorite food is roast beef. I'm not a bad man. My name is John Kramer. My favorite color is blue. It was at this point that I realized he was too far gone to provide me with any useful information. I sighed and turned to look out the window. The street was brightly lit and very well kept. Not even crack... I, not even crack. And there was a shadow. That set off alarm bells. Shadows in the empty city are rare and tend to come from one particular kind of source. Panic gripped me and I ran for the back door, shouting at the hallowed to throw him out the window and run like hell. I heard a crash, but I have no idea if they were able to follow through in the second part of the order, since by then I was running down an alley and the ground was shaking. The cardinal rule of traversing the empty city? Never interfere with this food. I imagine that Slate or John or whatever was tossed into the street just as the poor lost wanderer was passing by the shop. That poor lost wanderer, a victim of the empty city, doomed to wander its streets until death's liberation, would be the food, and the city was angry about its food being disturbed, and its wrath was terrible to behold. The world shifted all around me. I saw glimpses of trees and rivers and cottages and suburbs and warehouses and ancient buildings. The empty city transformed and shoveled all within and around. Still I ran. Still I Afghanistan. I ran till I was out of breath. So intent was I on putting as much distance between myself and the food as possible. It was nearly an entire day before the city had calmed down enough to allow me to leave. Slate won't be leaving any time soon, though. He broke the rule. He's trapped forever. I understand that the Convocation is trying to convince the city to hand him over to them. I wish them luck. I don't think that, I don't think the empty city is even capable of selling the difference between two in individual humans. Nor do I think it particularly cares. And of course, there's a the matter of Slate's ranting. The eye. I saw it. It was just outside the window. It looked like it was growing out of a fucking tree. And it was watching me. It was watching me very closely. If I ever find you, I'll tear you out of your goddamn throat. Your proxies make me sick. All who join with a monster must die. Yes, yes, you're also very full of self-righteous fury. I get it. Go bother someone else now. Don't worry, Stuart. As long as you're guilty of absolutely nothing, the eye shouldn't be that much of a problem. It's not like you've done anything worthy of its judgment, right? Hmm. So then the blog, I've got to read some time. Vacation. With that slate fiasco behind us, we can finally relax a bit. No idea when Master will have a new job that he is doing, but until then, it is vacation time. In the sun. In the newspaper of the sun. Glorious and Asadia are spending most of their time at the beach. I spend most of mine in the hotel room. I would go to the beach, but, well, I have a really silly looking farmer's tan, and I'm kind of self conscious about it. Don't you dare laugh. Anyway, it's been very nice just lounging about around and sleeping and not having to worry about psychotic serial killers. Vacations rule. Only work news I've heard is that apparently a new member is going to be added to our little team. Some agent girl named Lexi. Apparently she'll be at her hotel within a few days. Lexi. The Lexonio... The Lexonico was proxied? No, wait. He was a guy. I cannot remember when I had a vacation. I would have betted on the fact I have never taken one. Enjoy your time, steward. I don't know what accent I keep doing, but it's usually the same. Lexi. I was at a Dairy Queen down at the beach, sitting at one of those outdoor tables, eating an ice cream cone when she sat down next to me. I wasn't aware that the tall one steward enjoyed ice cream. I eyed the girl. She seemed about my age, so twenty, plus or minus a few years. She had straight black hair that came down on her shoulders, and a pair of glasses sat in the middle of her round, pale face, guarding a pair of green eyes that put me in my mind of pine trees. She wore a white t tank top and khaki shorts, and she was regarding me with the air of a scientist observing a particularly fascinating animal. Like, all this... Why did you give her all the frickin' description? I mean, I, I actually... I want to know what Glorious and Asedia look like, because they're a bit more interesting... Well, they were interesting characters, so I... 
wouldn't mind. He, he never even told us what color Crystal's hair was. But, uh, anyway. We all have our weaknesses, I told her. Lexi, I presume. You presume correctly. Mint chocolate chip? Indeed. She smiled. I prefer Oreo. I found myself smiling back. Oreo is all well and good, but I can hardly stand up to mint chocolate chips might. You must be insane if you think that. I shrugged. People tell me that all the time. It has long since ceased to lose meaning. I prefer Oreo as well. Lexi laughed. It wasn't a chuckle or a giggle or a big belly laugh. Just a laugh. A simple ha. It, you, okay, the fact that, that you're putting so much emphasis on this means you have a romantic interest in her. Either that or she's, a, or she's just otherwise going to be very significant to the plot. Because Jesus Christ, man, you didn't need all that just to say she laughed. We get it. Her eyes suddenly dart, darted back and forth, examining everyone else. Or everyone, everyone around else. Where's the rest of the team? She asked. I was told I'd be working with Reverends as well. I took another lick of ice cream before I answered her. Knowing them, they're either taking a long walk on the beach, listening to sappy love songs, or bo boning in their hotel room. They do little else. She shook her head. Doesn't that hurt them? Isn't that too much sensation? That's what I've always wondered, but apparently they don't seem to notice her imaginary hypersensitivity. Another lick. You haven't, re you haven't read my blog, then? Oh, no, I have. Both of them. I make it a point to learn a thing or two about everyone I work with. So what did you think? I think you were a very delusional person who sees monsters on every corner. I mean, seriously? Undead gas masks wearing serial killers? Living cities? A bunch of rejects in that one Hitchcock movie? I can only assume that the tall one messed you up pretty badly when you were converted. I don't like you. I liked you for a second. But... Arbitrary skepticism. Arbitrary skepticism. I mean, why? Why? Why am I so mad at this? That's a really good question. It just feels annoying. I felt my smile broaden. Glorious and Assetti I felt the same way when we started working together. You should have seen their faces when I first took them into the empty city. Oh wait, I'll just bring a mirror next time we go. Mother of snakes. Your expression will probably be the same. She laughs again. Yeah, bullshit. Your magic city doesn't scare me. Any more than your imaginary creepily sexualized preteen. Alas, I said. I wish I was making Charlotte up. I really do. But she really is that creepy. Another laugh. Well, it's not like I haven't worked with Mad Men before. Usually not as funny as you, though. She held, out, she held out her hand. I wiped some melted drops of ice cream out of my own hand and shook it. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to meet you, Steward. Lexi told me. I look forward to working with you. That happened on Tuesday. Since then, we've been enjoying ourselves, chatting with each other. I introduced her to the dumbass, dumb as a doorbell duo, and despite their insistence that I have made no entities up, she still refuses to believe. Oh well, she'll see soon enough, and I have no doubt that she'll accept it all readily. She seems to be a very bright, witty, charming young woman. Is this what his st servants are doing these days? Has he truly kept them on so slack a leash? Us monsters must band together. Harlequin, is that you? Don't you have a boy to be torturing somewhere? Stewie has a... <laughs> oh, Morpheus. I kind of miss you. <laughs> The Slender Man needs new help. Vacation terminated. Hey y'all, Lexi here, less than three. Irk, I nearly barfed typing that stupid little heart thing. And why'd you type it? Hmm. Steward was busy packing, so he asked me to update y'all on what's going what's going on. Okay, she's southern, that, that's clear. You all. Anyone who says you all is from the American South. That's not a joke. I mean, that, that's pretty serious. There's been more killings like the ones that Slate, Slate Guy was doing, so this new a team of mine is off to investigate. Stuart seems kind of mad. I don't think he's happy to hear about, hear about a copycat. No more vacation. Sad now. I was having fun. Looking forward to working with my new team and looking forward to talking with all of you. Hopefully it won't be an exercising soul-crushing boredom like these blowjees usually are. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He asked you to use his blog? After what he did to me when I used it? After how protective of it he is? That's it, Stu. You are not allowed to be annoyed by me and Asen anymore. Get off my blog, Gloriole. <laughs>
Oh, that's funny. Glory hole. Hey, Bay, we should try. <laughs> oh God. Thanks for the idea, Stewie. <laughs> oh, you crazy kids. I think I knew Alexi once. He wasn't at all like you. Or did I know him? Food for thought. One's a proxy. The other, the other is not buying the stuff on his blog. Together they fight crime. <laughs> okay. I commend you for that, Red Depths. That was relatively funny. This is giving me the impression of the world through these eye holes. We just had like a lot of arcs and it was often funny. Just sort of like a sitcom with proxies. But I want to write that. I want to write a, a sitcom with proxies now. Five deaths so far. It seems our new serial killer friend lacks Slate's grace. Slate could get to his targets through a door, making his progress untraceable. This new copycat killer apparently doesn't have that luxury. He breaks into their homes and slits their throats there. Oh, and two of the victims weren't servants. Was one was being followed. The other had no connection to Master whatsoever. Sloppy. Very sloppy. We should catch this guy soon. Bullshit. They were all proxies. Bring it on, you fucker. What? Where'd you get that assumption? What's senselessness? There are barbarians everywhere. Get him soon. I hate my food cold. Wait, is this the, am I in the right one? Copycat. Events. Okay, there we go. The spike guy from the comment section appears to be taking credit for these killings. He also seems to be profoundly annoying and close-minded, even by the rather low standards most of you, most of you set. I agree with that. High-fiving the microphone. Sorry. I just have one thing to say to you, Spike. Seriously? Out of all the screen names you could have chosen, you chose Spike? <laughs> Not a very creative one, are you? Word of advice, the cool kids don't have to try to seem cool. Yeah. I don't know why I did that. Little to report aside from the fact that it's very easy to follow a trail of bodies, even if very few of them are actually servants in life. Bit paranoid, are we, Spikey? Eh, Spikey. So let's see how the rest of the net is faring. Sweet Robin has dropped off the radar, and furthermore, his blog has been inherited by a woman whose name is one letter away from being racially insensitive. There's one post. It is a monster, but the monster bleeds. Okay. That chick who's obsessed with the stuff in thermometers is back. <laughs> Hello, I keep... Never mind. I have no idea how she escaped the empty city, but it appears she is now gone. To be, to be blunt, cuckoo bananas, so there's that. Oh yeah, I still need to read this. And I will eventually. A certain woman's new doll is a headcase, but then again, when are her dolls not? Tangled Web. Oh, that's another lizard bite blog that I've got to read. Mystery has finally cut ties with a ghastly family. The Resolve, a blog I've never heard of. Honestly, I'm almost tempted to hunt down her sister and let the two lovebirds have their way with her. Executive promises don't, don't buy me at all. Of course, I have my own problems, and frankly, someone as arrogant as that woman is going to ruin a foul of an entity sooner or later. And now she's got a, got a mysterious protector with a bird fetish. How lovely. And finally, the crazy blind man cultist chick is back. And she's some sort of chosen one or something. My, that's a lot of crazy women. Or women. The Archive. Yeah. Another blog that I've actually got to read sometime. Oh, and apparently Peter Rivers. Remember him? Is some sort of spokesman for the entities? I don't fucking know. Probably a few of them are up to something using him as a convenient pawn. I should probably stop typing now. Lexi heard something about another killing and that eye is outside my window again. Thank you for your compassion, Seward. It's nice to know that you are still human despite your employer. Still, I'm sure you have enough on your plate without involving yourself in my family's issues, and my niece needs a mother. But thank you again. Don't you know, Stuart? Crazy ladies made the world a little more entertaining. And mystery isn't crazy. Well, not yet. Hoping to try and avoid that. River's controlled. Poor kid. Fuck you, Stuart. Colin D. My boss has asked me to point out that in games of skill and chance, the house always, absolutely, without fail, wins. Make of that what you will. Oh, Stuart, do you liken yourself to some newscaster? Or newcaster? 
I pity you. I really do. I wish you wouldn't bicker so loudly. I'm trying to read. Why are you in this blog if you don't... Mm. <sighs> Steward's missing. We all woke up this morning and he was nowhere to be found. I don't think he would leave without telling us, but there's no sign of forced entry or anything. I'll keep you guys posted. Good fucking riddance. I hope he is found alive and well. I like him, despite his unfortunate career choice. That's a shame. I haven't spoken to Stuart personally, but he is quite fun to listen to and an interesting fellow. Here's to hoping he's discovered in one piece alive and dandy. The high mind awaits. I kind of really hope that something becomes of this. Just so I can. So there's like a punchline to this. Enemies. We still haven't had any luck finding Stewart or Spike. We tried to open a door to the empty city. I still cannot get over that thing is real. Thinking we might find him there. Somewhere. Next thing we know, there are these people attacking us. They move really weirdly. Is that a word? Yes. And one of them had this really. this freaky clown looking mask. So we can't use the city anymore. Those people are there waiting for us. Glorious was almost stabbed by the masked guy. I don't know what's going on. When I joined, I thought my job with the tall one would be simple. I didn't ask for all this crap about other entities or fears or PREs or aspects or fossils or whatever the fuck they are. That was Steward's area of expertise. None of us know what we're supposed to do. Clown mask. Could you explain it in more detail? Fine Concordia. Okay. Betrayal. The tall one sent us one word. The puppet thing. The wooden girl betrayed him. What? That... That's quite a bit more than one word. <laughs> Those people that attacked us in the city were hers. So did they take Steward? Or did he... No. No, he wouldn't do that. He'd never do that. Bad thoughts. Ah. How interesting. But what does the wooden girl plan to do? The tall one is the spawn of Satan himself. What does... He she think he's, she's going to do. She can't run, she can't hide. One way or another, the outcome will be the same. He will win. Unless you're Zeke Strom. What about your Zeke Strom? Zeke is awesome. Oh dear, shit's about to get real. More so. First of all, learn where either the tab key or the caps key is. Tab. What? Tab? Why would... Why tap? Anyway. Also, you have no idea to the extent of the wooden girl's power reaches. She's definitely equal to the Slender Man. Or, to the Slenderman. I gotta pronounce it right if you're gonna spell it like that. She's definitely equal to the Slenderman. And furthermore, she can be considered more dangerous than the tall one. I See, I, I won't argue with that. I will agree, I like, I like it when the fears are displayed at least as powerful as the Slender Man. If not that, though, more ruthless. She's a demon from hell that needs to be purged. First, don't consider that everybody you meet is on a fucking computer. Then what else could you be on? Are you, like, like writing it in a letter and mailing it to Google so they can put it on Blogger in this exact comment? Are you on, a, like, a... Maybe you're, maybe you're like on one of those stupid cell phones that kids these days use. But you know what? Those also have space bars. Those also have the shift key. Those also have a caps lock. You, you... Ah. I don't care what equal standing she has against him. This is the Slender Man we are talking about. This suited creature can stand up to bullets and electricity, bats and crowbars, even fucking cars. This guy can make fucking tent branches appear out of his suit, and when he's pissed, he grows even more. This. How do you know that? How does anyone canonically know what he does when he's mad? I mean, I can understand from a writer's perspective how a writer would know, but you are commenting in an in game perspective. How do you know? You don't. You're stupid. This guy can warp time and space itself and he cannot lose even if he lost. 
too many commas, it's getting annoying. This is a run-on sentence. If he lost, do you want me to tell me why there are tons of blogs and videos where people are being stalked by him? He cannot lose their works of fiction! It's called entertainment! Let me find an easier way to make my argument here. It's just a work of fiction. You're getting... I'm getting too worked up about it. But, well, I'm actually... I'm actually not that angry about this. I'm just exaggerating my reaction to convey my point better. But, just... Ugh, I'm gonna not reply. He cannot lose, but that does not mean he always wins. The wooden girl is... well, it's hard to describe the wooden girl. Sometimes she looks like a large wooden doll with a painted face and strings wrapped around her body. Sometimes she doesn't. Sometimes just looking at her will... well, your mind rejects it. You look every anywhere but where she is. Your eyes refusing to see her, refusing to even acknowledge there is anything there at all. She makes puppets out of people. I know what you're thinking. So does a no, he doesn't. Slenderman. But the Slenderman often gives his puppets a choice first. We just. What canon? In what canon does the Slenderman? do that? In what canon does he directly control people? I have not read a canon where he directly controls people yet. But if he did, it sounds like it will be stepping on the wooden girl's toes. And as anyone who's seen my LP of the Fear Mythos RPG knows, if you step on another Fear's toes, you'll get punched in the face by a blonde kid with a guitar controller. Wearing a trilby, I mean, not with the guitar controller. The guitar controller is optional. <sighs> she picks and chooses his victims. Yes, sometimes seemingly at random, but he must have his reasons and his servants. The wooden girl controls every. No, she doesn't! Oh my god! You're just obfuscating things. She's like, what canon? Again, in what canon? And be, like, I'm getting mad because you're using the absolute. You're using the absolute. Everyone, everyone she meets, really, everyone she controls, everyone she meets. She meets a lot of people, man. She would be controlling the entire world if she controlled. Everyone she meets and fears are are everyone. So if she, does she control fears when she meets fears? They're just you just absolutes. Don't use absolutes and define your canon. Like one of the things that I tried to do with Rapture was show that she doesn't control everyone. It's more of a selective process. It's like and there are characters who don't get controlled who simply submit out of will. I think Lizard Boy actually came up with the, the same idea around around the exact same time, which was a coincidence. But still, ugh. All of it come entangled in her string, sometimes without even knowing it. People going about their day without knowing she controls their actions. Her servants move with her whims. Their emotions look strange because she literally controls their bodies, moving each person like they were all marionettes. The funeral march of the marionettes. The funeral march of the marionettes. Why would it be a funeral march? Do funerals have marches? So you see, the Slender Man is bad, yes. Perhaps he can defeat the wooden girl eventually. But it would take time. Perhaps a lot of time. And in that time, when they fight, a lot of bad things would happen. Very, very bad things.
Because I don't know what the fuck voice I'm doing anymore. <laughs> I don't know about that guy above by two, but this guy's hungry. And thank you, Anon, for being literate. Although wrong. Thanks for the info, Anonymous. What I don't understand is why is it this is the first time I've heard of this entity? <sighs> Steward made a point in an earlier post. This was yesterday and I still remember it. Steward said that the whole reason that he made this blog was because he wanted to spread the information about the fears. So before this blog, there will be no information about the fears. So, read the blog. You, I mean, I suppose. I, mean, I, I suppose yeah. It's, it, the question of why is still it's still there, but it just feels really annoying. I hear more of Father Paranoia, and he doesn't debut a lot since that post in that forum and the so-called TV hijackings. What? What? TV hype? I, I'm assuming post in the forum is referring to the something awful thread, the paranormal images. But what, what's a TV hijacking? Sounds like like the Wyoming incident. The tall one doesn't seem to care who knows about him. His image is one that has spread widely through the internet. Not so with a wooden girl. She seems to be more selective of those who see her. Most only have some easy, uneasy feeling that the actions they take are not their own. There is a reason why she is called a manipulator and puppeteer. Perhaps this blog or this one will shed some more light on how the wooden girl operates. I beat the base to be canoe and the tangled web. Okay. Maybe the fears are of equal standing and power, but we, being humans, try to give them a hierarchy of sorts. They're all screwing with us. That's a good point. I like that. I like that. Because you're questioning it. You're you're questioning the hierarchy of all things. That's an interesting perspective. That's a nice way to look at it. I commend you, Anonymous. And you're not saying it's definite. That's what I love. You're not saying that it's true. You're saying maybe. I like that. Okay. Possible suspect. Glorious noticed that some girl has been following us. He didn't get a good look at her. We found a note this morning saying that Steward will be returned to us alive and unharmed if, if, if stopped looking for Spike. I... I don't know what I should do. Steward wouldn't want us to stop our investigation, but then again he probably wouldn't want to be hurt either. And for all his false and emotional issues, he's a pretty nice guy when you get to know him. I don't want to abandon him. But if we abandon the mission, what will the tall one do to us? Here's what you do. Abandon the mission, let Steward come back, and then go back to the mission. Simple as that. I can't tell you what to do with any authority, but I can give you some advice. Be very careful in your promises. Do what you have to to get Steward back, but be careful what you swear in return. Father hates cheats and liars and oath breakers. At least if you get Steward back, he would not have promised anything to his kidnappers and would still be free to do his job. Yes. Rescue. We got Steward back. I said he'd track the girl next time she showed up, and we followed her through some sort of kind of portal. On the other side, there was a forest. It wasn't the pack path of black leaves. The trees were all normal seeming. I'm not sure where we are. Were. Place. There was no sign of the girl anywhere. We found a cabin nearby. It was sort of old timey. It sat on the edge of a cliff overlooking the ocean. Steward was inside. He was tied up and unconscious. We took him and we went through the empty city to get out of where we were. It wasn't long before the dolls found us, but we left the city as soon as, as soon as they did. The rest of our traveling was done with the path. He's still out, but he seems fine. Please wake up soon. <laughs> Lexi Steward for Rebs. What a cute couple idiots such as you two make. It's been four days since you retrieved Steward. Is he still unconscious? What is going on? Is he still unconscious? <laughs> yes, that twice. Have you been attacked again? I'm back. I don't know where I was. There was a woman who took me. She was African, had curly hair down to her shoulders, kind of slanted eyes, and there was what looked like a burn scar on the left side of her neck. She's the one who took me and, and stuck me in that cabin. 
that stuck me in that cabin. Let's call her Miss Scarneck. I can't remember much of my, of my captivity. Mostly, it just blurred, up, blurred by up until I woke up with Legacy, Chloris, and Sadie standing over me, and then I had to, to order them to tie me up and lock me in a room, since I, upon waking, I, since I, upon waking, I was suddenly overcome with an urge, no, a need, to kill them all. That's how I spent the last few days. Tied up in a room with no one to keep me company. Well, the eye thingy showed up once. It grew out of the wood in the door and stared for hours until I fell asleep, then it was gone. So what have we learned? The compulsion has a time limit. Within a few days, it fades away, which means that whatever caused it has to re-administer the orders every now and again. Then. Interesting. After I was free from it, I did a bit of research and also learned this. Spike, or Sheldon Butters, I changed my name to Spike too, <laughs> has, has been in police custody for the last five days. Turns out that he was really bad at covering his tracks and left a trail for police to follow. Dumbass. I also learned that a few of his murders don't match up. A number of the killings left no evidence. They were carried out the same way that Slade's killings were carried out. I didn't pay much attention to them because they weren't ours. Turns out they were the wooden girls. That would explain why she's so mad, or at least it provided her with a good excuse to turn against Master. My guess is that Scarnack was using Spike to her advantage to cover up her own activities. Looks like we found Slate's successor. Pieces are beginning to fall into place. Let's see what else we can learn, hmm? Forgive the comment I just made in the previous entry. My computer's being weird lately. Glad you're okay, even if we're on opposite sides. So who does Scarnack work for, I wonder? Ha ha ha, butters. God damn it! There was a massacre at the local police station last night. Everyone there was torn to pieces. I'm not even exaggerating. I used the path to go see for myself, and after I threw up, I went back to the path trying to push the image out of my head. And Spike's missing. So I guess my mysterious foe has decided to make use of him. This is very bad. Sick transit Gloria. Sounds like the work of a certain Red Jack. Or rather, one of his disciples. Indeed, I don't hesitate to suggest that it was an attempt probably successful to create a red chapel. One of my colleagues was tasked by Red Jack to give a message to your master. My colleague is currently unavailable, so please permit me to pass this on in his place. Not following that. Red Jack, you mean Jack the Ripper? Well, at least we know who that is. The Queen's surgeon, Sir William Gull. Actually, the Ripper seems to have been a Victorian gentleman by the name of Tumbledee. Actually, the Ripper was neither of them, of those can be evidenced by my colleague's missive. Gull is quite easily cleared, but must being able to be in two places at once, and Tumbledee was a homosexual. Homosexual serial killers do not have a truly slaughtered women as a fair sex holds no attraction to them. You must remember there's a sexual element to serial killing. You mean there can be a sexual element to that serial killing? Yes, that's an extremely false generalization, lol. Owned. I'm sure that's like better. I can. Owned. Or I don't even know. I'm trying to do like Bane. Wolves. Remember that camper I met some time ago? Yes, I do. He showed up in my room last night. Good, I've been waiting to do voice acting as a camper again. I just turned around and there he was. Same pale face, same blank expression, same damp black hair, same fake smile. Hello, Joseph Stewart, he said. It has been a while. It has. Mind telling me what the fuck you're doing in my room? You are indebted to us. We are simply interested in your continued health. I don't know, let me try that again. That was bad. Hang on. You are indebted to us. We are simply interested in your continued health. I nodded. I'd forgotten that part. How goes your search? Have you learned your foe's identity? I'm doing very bad at being a camper. Cam campers are hard to friggin' voice act. It depends on what stage it is, I suppose. Not exactly, but I have my suspicions. Do tell. I hesitated a moment. The wooden girl. The fake smile got bigger, though his eyes remained the same. What are your reasons for suspecting her? Her betrayal, I said. She used the death of her doll as an excuse to betray Master. It's flimsy, and I know that she's never cared for those in her service. You have concluded that she purposely murdered her dolls as part of some grand plan? I nodded. The camper was silent for a moment, and then spoke again. Wolves. Excuse me? It has been said that if you see a lone wolf in front of you, the rest of the pack is behind you. That's really creepy, Jesus. They are animals, similar to dogs, but they are cunning. They hunt with 
Finesse. They hunt intelligently. Do you know what apes, rats, and certain birds have in common? Warm blood? Correct. But there is also evidence of the capability of metacognition. Thought about thought. Self-awareness. They are more intelligent than one would assume. Just like wolves. This was getting annoying. Is there a point to all of this? A real smile this time. There is. And then he was simply gone. Back to wherever the i needed him. I like the, the real smile. That was a nice touch. But, Stuart, how thick can you be to not make the connection? Wolves? Timber wolves? If it's not timber wolves, I'm going to feel really stupid. But that's what I'm betting it is. Do you suppose this is a veiled reference to the timber wolves? That is a definite possibility, and I wouldn't put it past the Archangel to do something like this. Hell, if anything, I'd be surprised that thing limited itself to only a few murders and some lies. Self-awareness. After cognition. The knowledge that you are a knowing creature, a learning creature. Does the Archangel learn? Does it care that it is alive? Is it alive? I think the Archangel is too obvious a puppet master. The same with the wooden girl. I think you need to look at different patterns. Like the weather. I think they only make sense when you step back and see it as a whole. Hello there, little one. Would you like to play a game? I don't think Stewie Boy's one for games. Come on, Jester, I'll play your little game. Is he talking about the black dog? He's one of the only... He's one of the only one of the fears I can stand. Attack. Do, 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 do. I said he is dead. Spike found us. He had a gun. We didn't even know he was there until the window shattered and a city crumpled to the ground, leaving a cloud of pink mist in the air. Gloria screamed. It was it was a raw, primal thing. A howl of rage and of mourning. <laughs> You're missing a you. <laughs> raw, it's the morning time! I want some breakfast! It's the most important meal of the day! And then we heard Spike's laughter coming from the outside. And we heard him shouting, All you proxy fuckers need to die! Lexi and me had to drag Glorious to the path. He was struggling to go find Spike. To kill him. To... Oh god. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. It's the most important meal of the day! One down. However many the fuck more to go. Let's go with two. Wow. Shit's gotten hectic now. My sympathies. If the blame truly is to be laid in the wooden girl, then we share something in common. An enemy. That's supposed to be a colon. And you're less annoying than the other proxy bastards. I am sorry for Glorious. I'm not familiar with how this works, but couldn't your master bring her back somehow? Final testament of a broken man. Around midnight, Glorious ran off. He didn't say anything, he just disappeared. Lexi didn't want to look for him. She was shivering. I don't think she'd seen much death. Especially by the standards of Master's servants. I said he had shaken her. I left her in a safe house and went to find Glorious. I found him in a mall. Spike had a rifle with him, and I could see Scarnet behind him. She seemed... I don't know, lost? Glorious had his own weapons and was firing at the two from across the hallway. Spike took aim, and he fired. Glorious went down. Scarnet turned around and a door appeared before her. She, she said something to Spike. I was too far away to hear it, and the two of them stepped through it. I rushed out of my hiding place, Glorious aside. Steward? He asked when I got there. His voice was barely above a whisper. That you? Hang on, I said. I'll get you out of here. He shook his head. No. No. I'm gonna see Dana. It took me a second to realize who he was talking about. Dana. I said he his real name. It was all so easy when she was with me. They gave us memories. I can remember losing my parents in the 9-11 attack. I can remember the tall one finding me. I remember meeting her there, but I remember meeting her three years ago, too. 
I remember introducing her to my parents, meeting hers. I remember we were walking down the street one day when he showed up. I was quiet. It was easier to just pretend that the fake memories were true. It was easier with her, Dana. Just hold on, Glorious. We're gonna get help. Gerald. My name is Gerald. And then his breathing stopped. I left him there. It was a quiet walk out of the mall. I tried to ignore the eyes gaze upon my back. That was an effective post. I... They were likable characters. I... I mean, I really liked them. And I, I missed them already. They were so cheerful, and they had good reasons to be... St like, as annoying as th they might have been, they, th which I didn't even think they were, they, still, they had a reason to be that. Because they were just trying to forget about life. And that's just... Oh, God. And that... Oh, I... I... I like that. I like Steward. Cool down. Condolences. Gerald? Really? Wow. <laughs> You're a dick. I am sorry for the loss. Sorry for your loss. I'm sorry for your pain, Steward. And as for Grace, I think it's wonderful that you're on such good terms with the Furies and their pets. Though it makes you look a lot less innocent. Okay. Alright, only 16 posts left to go. The hunt begins. I found Spike's current location. Time to make that bastard pay. Advice. Take a deep breath. Be patient. Stay calm. Load your gun. Aim for a weak point. Pray to your father. Fire. If all goes well for you, this will be your story from the other side of the barrel. I'm sorry about your proxy friends. They were, were worthy opponents. Respect, Hunter. I See, this is why I like Hunter. Because he... That's, that's a cool thing to say. That, that's a nice thing to say. I like that. It's respectful. Warehouse. It's like, wow, this is really building up to, an, to a, a nice, a pleasant to read climax. I found Spike in a warehouse. He was expecting me. Well, Mr. Chief Froxy is here, he shouted. I'll make you scream, and then I'll make your boss scream. Scream! I ducked behind a crate as he began shooting me. His laughter almost seemed to drown out the gunfire. I'll kill all you proxies, he shouted. You, Morningstar, Messenger, Executor. Wait. I've been saying Executor, haven't I? Executor. <laughs> executor, what the hell? Executor. I'll slaughter you all. It's what you deserve. I opened up the path and stepped in. I took two steps. I stepped out. Spike stood before me with his back turned, firing at the crate I'd been crouching behind just moments ago. Fucking dumbass. He started laughing again, and I grabbed his shoulder and jabbed my knife into his fucking neck. Good riddance, you piece of shit. Skarnik, I hope you're reading this, because you, you're, because you Patsy is dead and I'm coming for you next. Whoever your boss is is going to regret ever crossing paths with me. You are beyond redemption. Good night, sweet friends. Good riddance indeed, that pathetic thing. So much for killing us himself. Whoever that thing in this Skarnak worked for, I find to be uninteresting presently. There are plenty of grudges against ones like you and I, steward. I have my tasks, my list. I dare not interfere. Should you requ uh, request assistance, however, that I can provide to a colleague. Rules are rules, and I abide them very well. Good job. You get a B-plus from me. Oh, hi, James. Didn't see you there, Colon 3. Anyways, it's fun to see Master's puppets fighting each other. Like a chess game, really. Now, who's the king? Bastards in fighting? Typical. Just like our family, eh, brothers? And I see that you're still alive, Peter, slash traitor! Drive off a cliff, brother. James. Long time no see. Steward, I've been thinking. If it's not the wolves that are responsible, what about those bug things? Forget if they have a name or ever read it. Don't they take over bodies? Aside from the killings, do you know if these people had any other behavioral slash personality changes? Spike certainly seemed to know more than the first guy. Maybe looking into where both killers came from would yield some clues to how they were chosen and who was responsible. Spike knew nothing. He was just some asshole with delusions of grandeur caught up in his own idea of hero heroism. He was a patsy used by Skarnak, nothing more. Skarnak is Slate's real successor. 
I find her, I find the answers I need. Hopefully. Where's Lexi? Life goes on. I am... I have a confession to make. Hang on, right, so this is Stewart, okay. I've never been in a relationship, at least not that I can remember. Though I doubt I ever had some kind of childhood romance, and childhood romance, so... Not really. I mean, there were girls that I liked, but I was too shy, too scared to really talk to them. Yeah, I know. The big bad proxy, god I hate that word, is a little loser underneath his tough guy in exterior. Shut up. Glorious and Asadia, Gerald and Dana, they had each other. When life was too much for, each, for either one to bear, they looked to one another for support. I never had something like that. Even with my friends, I was always distant. I have trouble really relating to other people. Well, no, that's not the word I'm looking for. I have trouble connecting to other people. So yeah, that's me. Never had a girlfriend. Never been kissed. Until the other day. It's just... It's been so hard, losing those two. And me and Lexi, we're together constantly. I was seeing this. I knew this was gonna come. Freaking called it. I mean, there was attraction since day one, but maybe we're just clinging to each other because we're both hurt? Is that healthy? <laughs> Look at me, concerned for my mental health when I work for an incomprehensible monstrosity. I'm just afraid. Afraid that I'll lose her. Afraid that I'll drive her away. Afraid that this is all just a phase or something. I've never really dealt with these kind of issues before. Lister Bite, you're surprising me here. I don't know why I didn't expect this kind of stuff. I mean, because I... I respect Lizard Bite as a writer. I just have. It's been so long since I've really read much of his stuff. But this is making me happy. This is good. This is good stuff. Wow. You're directly involved with the motherfucking Slenderman. It's all end in tears. If this kind of thing gets to you, then you might want to find another line of work. I've been so alienated by my family and peers I consider myself asexual. I've never been kissed or been on a date either. My sister and stepfather were in the habit of speculating whether I'm gay. I'm not. Whenever we had a family gathering. I can barely remember getting a hug when I was growing up, let alone being told I was loved. I'm a mess. That said, if you can trust my advice, there are worse reasons to fall together with someone. Lexi seems like a nice enough person, honest. Honesty is always a must in a relationship. And you know she can read this blog, right? You just outed yourself. If she feels the same, she'll have to talk to you about this soon enough. I've never been in a relationship either. Of course, I'm a spirit that eats people possessing a high schooler. What's your excuse? I may as well throw myself into this fire. I have had two relationships, both online. And the second one technically never ended. But I then again... I'm just fooling myself if I think it hasn't ended. Because I haven't heard from her since October. But... I mean, she seems okay. She's... I mean, I still often... She still updates things. But... She just blocks me. But... Anyway. Where was I? What was I saying? Right. Like, in real life, I've... not really had much. There's like an instance or two of, of niceness and, and proper affection, but really, I mean, I'm 18, so I think 18 years and there's only been only two instances of, instances of proper affection in 18 years. I think it's, that's pretty scarce. But then again, it's better than Stewart. <laughs> I can consider myself lucky there. But anyway. No. No, 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 no. Not again, not again, not again, not fucking again. No, 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 don't you fucking dare, not again. What? Stewie, bro, what the hell? I don't know what the hell's going on, but you stay frosty, Holmes. I wonder what is happening. Please hang in there, steward. Fools. It was stupid. I was so stupid. She's dead. Just like Crystal. The same scene. The blood everywhere. The hotel room. The killer standing over her corpse. Lexi. Gone. Scarnet. Bitch. 
tried to say something. I think she tried to tell me her, me her name. I don't, I don't care. No weapon, it's just my fists. I was so angry. Murderous bitch. Let's see. Skarnik died with a smile on her lips. What right did she have to die that way? What right? No right. No one has any rights. I let myself forget that. I let myself be taken in by the empty promises of human companionship. Human life is fleeting. Humans are traitors and treacherous and always changing. Friend becomes foe becomes friend. Living becomes dead. There's only one constant in life. Master. I let myself forget that. I was foolish. I let myself grow soft and weak. No more. Stewart. Her name was Rachel Stewart. <laughs> Her name was Rachel Stewart. Wait, no. What, really? Her name was Rachel Stewart. She was born as Rachel Edwards, but married a name named a man named James Stewart. What? In 1991, she had a son and they named him Joseph. Oh, you're talking about his mother. He grew up to be a quiet boy. One day, he disappeared. Rachel was distraught. For a month, she prayed for her son's safety and returned to her. The night before Easter, her prayers were answered. Her son came home and slit her throat. I'll be seeing you very soon. Oh, it's judgment. Nice. Stewart, it only saves us I feel we have a lot in common personality-wise. Cutting yourself off from everyone is not healthy. I left my family, true, but I created a new one first. People say we are defined by our actions, but I think we are defined more by those uh, to whom we give our strongest emotions. I would rather be defined by who I love than who I hate. Love is not weakness. Three down. One to go. Is it safe to assume the comment of the top by judgment is the eye? I myself highly doubt it, because whoever that is can't spell right. It is a pretty sad post, like the Rachel Stewart thing, that was pretty depressing. Judgment. I've been hunting down the members of Slate's old magic troop. None have given me any useful information. No matter how strenuously I question them, no matter how forcefully I beat them, no matter how tearfully I beg them to just tell me what I want to know so I can stop hurting them. The one I visited this morning didn't survive his questioning. He had a heart condition. When I turned to leave his house, I found Slate standing in the doorway. I froze. Who are you? Slate smiled. It wasn't a cruel smile. It wasn't a joyous smile. It was peaceful. You know. You can't be here. You were trapped in the city. Slate nodded. I was trapped when I was called Slate, who was called John Kramer. But now my identity is shifted. I am a new being. No longer the empty cities. I didn't say anything. I stood there and watched him, waiting to see what he'd do, trying to figure out what his game was. The eye found me. It entered into me. A new identity was born. I am the eye. The eye is me. I am judgment. Slate, or judgment or whatever, began walking toward me, a knife flashing in his hand. The sins of my old self burn within me. Soon the flames will consume this body, and a new judgment must be found. But for the time being, I live, and I have a purpose. Retribution. He struck out at me. It was like watching a cobra. I put my arm up defensively and, and jumped back. My arm stung. Blood trickled down my skin. Your sins weigh heavily on you, Joseph, he said. Accept my cleansing. It is the sweetest fate you can be given. They have all taken notice of you. You cannot be at peace until your sins are burned away. He struck out at me again, and again I dodged it. And again I felt a new cut running down my flesh. Well, you didn't really dodge it if you still get cut. I can see all your sins. Even the ones a sightless one took your memory of. I can see the first lie you ever told. The first person you ever hit. The first time you were ever intentionally cruel to someone. Every sin in your life glows like an ember. It is a wonder people do not burn on their own, so infinite are their evils. He slashed me again, and this time I retreated into the path. I ran down the trail, and I heard his voice call out to me, as loudly and clearly as if he was right behind me. You cannot run, Joseph. Face judgment, or suffer at their hands. Either way, your time in this world is growing short. Yikes! That must have been scary. Hey, if you need a place to hide out or something, you can just come and find me. Such a sad fate. OMFG! It's judgment with an E! 
I just cannot help saying that. This kind of thing pisses me off. You do know that Stuart was American, right? Yeah, but that throws me off a lot as well. Because <laughs> I never know which one's the right spelling. Light bulb. Take a look at this. Doesn't make you think. Perchance to dream. Oh yeah, this thing. This is... This is a rake blog. Yeah, this was... With... Yeah. With the rake. Not that thing again. That guy's a few waves short of a tide. The compulsion. It was also fucking obvious. But I couldn't see it? How could I? He's just a beast. A mindless animal. That's what I saw when I looked at him. That's what we all see. It's exactly what he wants us to see. We focused on his claws and his fangs. We forgot about his voice. That voice that implants ideas and instructions in our minds when we are at our most vulnerable. He worked for years to make sure we only saw the fearful aspects. Even the entities came to see him as a beast. They were blind to the chaos he was sowing within their ranks. So much patience. So much careful planning. So much work just to make sure that humanity knew about them. Just to make sure that humanity would rebel against them. Chaos is doubtlessly his end goal. For from chaos, anything can rise to supremacy. And we were all too eager to follow the instructions he whispered into our ears. He is the feral beast. He is the whisperer. He is the incubus. He is the lord of nightmares. He is the anathema. He is... The rake. The rake! Rock. All that stuff from Moonlit Whispers. Speak for yourself. We rate the rake is far more dangerous than your master. The rake, at least, is more smart enough to play by the rules instead of stomping all over the place and rocking the boat. That's why the rake is only watched while your master is laughed at and hunted with extreme prejudice. They hunt the Slender Man now? <laughs> Good luck with that. But who am I to talk? I'm hunting a certain wooden monster, too. You talking about the PTC? They're having some major problems on their end. Apparently their leader, Spectre, has gone nuts. Stay on your toes, folks. No, I don't work for the private sector, and I'm not based in the colonies. I work for Queen and Country. We've been dealing with these sorts of wankers for a very long time. I'm not even going to attempt to do a British accent because I cannot do British accents. In the shadow, I remember this guy. Poor Spectre. Going to die is the trigger of the rapture. I feel sorry for him. What? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? I appreciate that you tend to talk about rapture. I do appreciate that, but what are you talking about? Oh my god. I mean, like, the point of, like, the, there was no single trigger for, for the rapture in in the, the logs. It, it was meant it's meant to be a really complicated thing, but the thing that triggers it, there's no one trigger for it, and this was certainly not it. This d didn't even happen in the canon. Like, Jesus. Like, this was... This was... This was about, like, what was it? August 12th, 2011? The rapture started in May of 2011. A few months before this. You were... Ah! Master will soon confront the rake. A meeting ground has been chosen. I almost laughed when I heard it. It's a place that I know well. The Chesapeake... At the Chesapeake Bay. What? That's no fair. Don't bring them here. I live right there. Yeah, what is wrong with my life? I'm happy to see that the mask was able to help you, Owen. I'll be, I'll be waiting on pins and needles until you see the rake. Don't forget the popcorn. I am so looking forward to this. I'm not. Goddamn little kid. You should die already. Anyways, on topic. I am torn in who to root for. They're both my master. Who's supposed to be dying? I think I lost that reference. I'd say to, I'd say to stay out of it unless you want to literally be used as a human shield. Wow, we're getting close to the end now. Memories. Been hanging in the area. Tonight's night, master faces him. So many memories. I've been walking around my old neighborhood. Someone else is living in my old house now. I guess they don't mind living in a place where a family was murdered. Were they my family? Sometimes I find it hard to believe. What memories I have are distant, and the rest... Well, I gave my childhood to the blind man, didn't I? But none of that matters now. <laughs> Get it? Because none... Tonight, one way or another, this all ends. Oh, great. I'm gonna go hide in my closet and hope nothing happens. 
shit. Anyway, Stewart, if you don't survive this, well, I don't really have anything nice to say, but I don't have anything, anything mean either. You're just another victim of circumstance, which I can understand, believe you me. Hold on to your human self, Joey. No matter what, don't lose your humanity. In the end, that's, that's all we are. Human. That's meant to be a comma, or it could, it could be a colon, I suppose. Stay safe, both of you. Also, I'll, I will make popcorn and eat it while reading the fight. Assuming he survives to post it. Of course your family lived there. Don't you remember slitting their throats like it meant nothing to you? Wasn't that your big test before you became his? I hope you survive. Simply because if you don't, none of us will. I can't stop for long. I have to keep moving. I'll explain later. Blah, 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 blah. That's my impression of what that said. The running, the battle in the bay. Here's what happened. I ran out of boat and went out to the coordinates my master gave me. I waited there for an hour before he appeared in the deck. The rake appeared a few minutes later. It looked right at master and it smiled at him, like it had won something. And then it turned its attention to me. Those eyes, those horrible, pitch black, but perfectly intelligent eyes, took me in and I felt something emanate from them. Expectation. A command floated into my mind. A command from master. I was to walk to the rake. I was tribute. Whatever deal they'd worked out, my life was part of it. I couldn't even move. Fear held my body rigid. The command came again, stronger this time, and I found myself stepping forward, toward that thing. And then there was gunfire. The rake's right eye exploded and reared back in rage and pain. I watched, dumbstruck as his eye reformed on its face, and it turned to look in the direction of the shots. I followed its gaze and saw another boat approaching us. More gunfire rang out and more bullets pulled with the rake's body. I started to walk back toward the other boat, but found that I couldn't. Black tentacles held me back. Master had no intention of letting me get away. I ducked down. The tentacles gave me enough leeway to do that, at least, and watched as bullets began to slam into Master's body. They made little splashes, little ripples like they're going through water, and Master stood there, unharmed, quietly watching as the boat approached. I must have gotten close enough, because I saw people leap into our own boat, branching knives and machetes and hatchets. It took me only a moment to figure out who they were. The movement of their limbs gave them away. Dolls. And then the tentacles were gone, and I saw a master burst into a thousand tendrils of darkness, lashing out at all the deers, <laughs> all the deers, all the dolls near him. One's head flew clean off, another took a slash across his stomach. But even dead, their bodies continued to move, continued to attack, controlled by invisible strings. I crawled across the deck and dimly realized that the rake had fled the scene. Evidently, he didn't want to be caught in the chaos that was brought on. I stood and prepared to leave off the boat. I felt something cut against my back. I screamed as a slash of heat arced through me and warm, sticky blood seeped down my body. I spun around to face my attacker. Charlotte stood there, a bloody knife in her hand, grinning at me. Hey there, Stu Stu. Bye bye. She slashed at me again and I ducked to the side. Then I found myself I have to scramble away as quickly as I could. The girl was fast. There was no way someone in her age could move so quickly with such accurate strikes. And abruptly, all sound of battle ceased. Charlotte froze in place, dropped her knife, and fell to her knees. She brought her face to the floor and stayed in that position. I turned to see who she was bowing to. Just four feet away from where I sat, Master and the wooden girl stood face to face with each other. The wooden girl moved first, striking out with her knife in her right hand. Master deflected it with a humanoid arm that extended from the blackness that comprises his body. The strings around the wooden girl unwound themselves and flew at Master, wrapping around the, what limbs they could and trying to pull him out to the ground. A futile effort. He merely slid out of the strings as if his body were smoke, and a tentacle lashed out from somewhere deep within his body. This wasn't like the other ones I'd seen. The smoky, inky tendrils of blackness. No, this one looked... Looked like it had actual substance. It crashed against the wooden girl and wrapped around her. I felt something in my mind, like a snarl of rage, and then fire speed forth in the depths of Master's body and down the length of that tentacle. The fire spread out and consumed the wooden girl. And then she did something I never thought I'd see her do. The wooden girl screamed. The sound seemed to almost break and tear itself, and for an instant I could see a vast void of nothingness around the two entities, and then it was all over and Master let the charred corpse of his opponent crash to the deck. I was just beginning to relax when another scream tore through the air. I spun around and saw Charlotte, now in her feet, at her back ar arced and her eyes wide open in pain and terror. She screamed and, she screamed, and screamed as her flesh began to split apart, and, and from beneath her skin, wood emerged. It grew out of her, and it continued to grow, covering all of her. Her screams finally cut off as the wood grew over her mouth. For a moment, the wooden shape before me simply stood there, and then shapes began to appear on it as it painted by an invisible hand. A puppet's face soon looked straight at me, a painted on smile taking me in, and then the wooden girl vanished in a burst of power. I was thrown backward, and the last thing I remember before passing out was cold water coming over me. I woke up on the beach an hour before dawn and went to the first safe house I could think of. I've been, run I've been running since. 
you know what happened. Running since. Crash against Wooden Girl. I dug down. Wow. A battle against between the Rake and the Slender Dude turns into a battle between the Slender Dude and Wooden Girl? Well, you're still alive. Steward, do you need Sanctuary? I'll help if I can. <clears throat> this is highly unfortunate. Dare I say you are a colleague I actually enjoy. It displeases me to see if you have fallen into this predicament. There are solutions to everything, Steward. Ways to tiptoe around situations. You can trick a man that sees everything. That being said, I add this. There are some that wish not to see your life extinguished. Should you wish to discuss such matters, my door is open. You need only go to the, pro to the profile and see. You are now upon opposite grounds and shall be hunted without mercy. Good luck, Steward. Mortal Kombat. What? Just because I'm a ghost, I can't keep up with pop culture. I love MK. Anyways, that's... Anyhow, let's face it. This is not the Highlander. It is a futile war between the feared when there is any. And even they have absolutely no hope of killing each other. They are forces which will recreate themselves. Kind of like a phoenix, I guess. But maybe if the whole world forgot what they do with their power? Hmm. Running. I can't use the path anymore, but it seems that I'm still marked, so I can travel through the city. <clears throat> to those offering to help, thanks, but trust me, you don't want the things chasing me to come knocking on your door. No amount of magic or connections will save you from them. By my count, I have about five godlike entities after me. If I get near you, there's no way you'll be able to protect yourself. I use Travel City. Offering thanks, but help me. By five, I get no way magic will use. Ding dong, the witch is dead. Don't you worry, Stewie. Either you'll be lunch or you'll be dead. Gotta remember, Stewie, death means nothing to us. Sure, the big wolf will bring you back even if that means you'll be a bit dead on the inside. <laughs> Wish I could chase you, but since I can't, you can come here. Bring bring all them friends chasing you if you like. Yeah, I'd like that. Graves could use some fun, too. We could have some real good times here. Paint the cemetery with some red. Promise I'll wait till you leave before I come after you afterward and all that. Well, if I've got the blind torment, should consider it. Good offer, boyo. Pitting chaos against castles over the solution, eh? Don't work what you lose. We're just me and Graves be dead and hanging. Come on, let me in. I want to... What? I didn't... What? Ugh. Personally, I'd recommend going to a bar and getting shit-faced. Firstly, it will, will anesthetize you. Secondly, it will bring you into the domain of one of the higher powers, namely the god of bashed awards. If you've ever been so drunk that all the bars blend into one, you've no idea how you got home safely, then you've already passed through his liminal, liminal realm. He has no love for any of the fears, especially your former master. There will, as always, be a price. But as one of the higher powers, it will be something you can afford. Hell, with your name, you may even get free aid from the Chaos Monkey who loves puns. Run, Stu, run! D colon. <laughs> this, this will be fun to watch. Ikor. I can feel it inside of me. It's like some kind of slime slithering through my veins. I feel a need, no, an obsession with, of all things, counting the hairs on my arms. I keep losing count and having to start over. This is the favor, isn't it? The debt I owe to the Ikor. It's coming to collect. It's infested me and now it's replacing my bodily fluids with its own ink. Soon I'll lose myself. I'll become a camper, just like an, just another limb of the Icor. Maybe it's what I deserve. Hello. How are you? I am fine. The computer is on. I am reading on it. Steward, come to Jersey. I'll try to get rid of it. I have a lullaby with a little friend. I can try to help you too. Oh god, just move it. Oh god, Judgment was waiting for me in the city. I just stepped through the door and there he was with a knife in his hand, shouting about how horrible I am. Horrible. Horrible. I'm a horrible person. Kill people. Dead because of me. Couldn't protect Crystal or Glorious or Sadie or Lexi. He was my one companion, the voice in my head that kept me company. He made sure I was never alone. Even if I was, if I was good and loyal, I'd never be alone again. Why did he betray me, abandon me? Why, why, kill me, kill me, kill me, kill me, l little, at little be... M mem kill me, or mem kill uh, meme b. This blog is interesting. I enjoy reading this blog. Stewart is a bad person. Stewart is an interesting person. Bad people are interesting. Wait. A minute. Oh, it's supposed to be camper comments. Okay. Digit Stewart, <laughs> you're talking to the camper. Digit Stewart is not a bad person. He had a limited number of choices and cannot be blamed for what he became. Everything he, he had was stripped away, so the only thing he could devote himself to, to was that monster. Now he's been, he's been betrayed. Steward, my offer still stands. I ask for nothing in return. No deals, no demands. And if, even if you do not take me off my offer, know that you have my support. Fight. The faceless bastard may have abandoned you, but you are not alone. Memento Mori.
I don't expect to survive this. I'm at the point where I'm, where I'm measuring my life in hours. I'm in an apartment building. I can no longer access the city. I can hear a sound above me. Knives scraping against the floor. It's the rake. I look out the window and I can see my former master. Slender man. Might as well call him what he is. Standing out there watching me. People pass by as if he's not even there. Oblivious to him. One group of people moves oddly. Their limbs loose. Their movements strangely exaggerated. The wooden girl's dolls. I look out another window and judgment is there. I remember he said something about his sins burning him up soon. And I see now what he meant. I can't even recognize Slate's body anymore. So decrepit looking like he's aged 60 years in the span of a week. I hear whispers, telling me to just give it all up, and a gray blur moves in the corner of my eye. I don't know why the choir is after me, but there are a lot of things I don't know. And I can feel the eye core within me, spreading. I cut myself in a nail about an hour ago and no blood came out. Only clear fluid. It won't be long now. One way or another, I'm going to die soon. And you know what? I'm okay with that. In the past few months, I went from just some random insignificant college student to a supernaturally sponsored murderer. I've killed people without hesitation, and afterward I come up with justifications for it, and I try to ignore that feeling in the back of my head that what I'm doing is wrong. I try to block the inevitable nightmares from invading my sleep. I try and try, but to no avail. Guilt is a punishment for our sins, and I feel little else these days. But my sins end tonight. I have no intention of becoming a puppet. Not again. So, all you monsters, all you horrific abominations, what are you waiting for? I've got a machete on my right and a shotgun on my left. First prize goes to the one, one who brings me down. My name is Joseph Amory Stewart, and I'm ready for you. So come and get me. Damn. I just to complete it, let's go through the comments. I'd say I felt sorry for you, but oh wait, I don't. You deserve what's coming to you, or has come by now. Goodbye, Stewie. Goodbye, and I hope you find peace. Give him hell, Joseph. I was sometimes angry with you, Steward, because I think you were always a good man, just misled and perhaps weak, at least up until this point. Whatever happens, I'll be sorry to see you go. If nothing else, you'll be fired a window into how Slenderman, um, Slenderman and others operate, and that was an invaluable insight. If you survive, which seems all but impossible, and our paths cross, I'll still do whatever I can to help you. Whether it's just to somehow get the Ikor out of you and restore you to yourself, or to put to rest whatever remnant is left of you. Whatever others might think of you for the work you did for Slenderman, I think you also did us a service, even if it was un unintentional. I hope you get revenge on all those who shaped you. Your judgment is on the Grand Crater's hands, for you have played a part in the reordering of things. You will not be alive to meet me, but I will try to rechannel your soul lest you fall to the false god. May we meet in the hands of the clock, clockmaker. Sleep is a blessing. May you wake in a better place. O eight O P Y T T. The Shadow. Be happy, everyone. I found one universe where Steward survives. It is unbelievable, but he somehow escaped all six of his pursuers in that world. You should praise him for his courage and achievement. I will travel to another universe again now. I only came back these few times to see if this world could deviate from the norm or not. Farewell. How? How would you... I can understand escaping the others, but how would you escape Eat? For the Icor? How? Because... I mean, okay, I've noticed that in this canon, the Icor seems to move slow, a bit slower than, than Eat does. But actually, then again, testing in progress shows that, that Eat can move slowly, but only if it's injected. If it's injected into your bloodstream, it will move slowly. But that's it. If you drink it, it goes faster. But, uh, whatever. Farewell, and may you be Joey once again before you go. I'll miss this blog. Aw, this was so well written, even with a few typos. Thank you for your story. I like how the last comment was was out of game. I, I, I legitimately like that. I, that is kind of just, it's a nice little transition from the story to talking about it, because that's what I'm going to be doing. Hidden, hidden in the trees, that was that. And eccentrically bored. I really like those. Like they impressed me. Eccentrically bored was a bit slow. It could have could have been more exciting, but it worked for what it was worth. It was realistic enough. It was a nice little a, a nice little. Uh, it was like a. I want to say it was a nice take on a slender vlog, but I mean it was a slender vlog. But it was good by slender vlog standards. Yeah, slender. Standards.
and hidden in the trees. Now that was the fucking feature presentation. I was really good. I can see why people always praise this. It was really memorable. And fun. The characters were memorable. The their relations were understandable. Their uh, their dynamics were rather complex. It was hmm. And a bit like a bit like the world through these eye holes, which I suppose it makes sense because they're both about proxies. It hidden in the trees was pretty clearly about just a how in the end we are just pawns. Or that, that is the human we just pawns for the fears. And it does a very good job at showing that. In fact actually I would have to say that it probably does a better job at conveying that than hidden in the app ah, the world through these eye holes. But then again the world through these eye holes is focused a bit more on different stuff. Uh, hidden in the trees kinda just well it, it kinda laid it on a bit thick. But in a good way. I like that it laid it on thick. I like when themes are laid on thick. But hmm. Stewart was definitely a memorable character. He was a likable guy. Had his flaws, but they were good flaws. I, I think he could have used a bit more flaws. It could have been... I, I don't know. I'm mixed, really. I mean, I'm mixed in a... a mostly, it's mostly just good things. I think mostly good things with it. But at the same time, it's still just a blog story. It's, it still could be more interesting. It, and it, I mean, I guess it's because there's been like 300 fear blogs by now. And most of them do tend to follow similar formulas to this. The ones that are proxy blogs tend to be like this. And this is a very well-written proxy blog, but... And, and okay, I'll, this one gets passes for every complaint that I have because this was one of the first fear proxy blogs. And so it, it, it's like Seinfeld is unfunny, that, that trope. Where Seinfeld started everything, so people think look back at it and think it's unfunny because all the jokes have been used in newer things, but but Seinfeld was the first thing to use them. Just like Hidden in the Trees was the first thing to use a lot of things that I've noticed, I think. And I, I'll i give it passes because they work well for this. They work well in the context of this, and they're, they were innovative for this. But one thing I don't like, one thing I can rather objectively say I don't like, the crossovers. I mean, not even crossovers. It's, I just, like, it does reference other blogs a lot. And, like, the, the whole rake reveal, yeah, it just dumps perchance, for, uh, like, perchance to dream on you, and, I mean, it's just, it's, it's like, it's like if you're reading a book, and, like, towards the end of the book, you're finally about to find the reveal of who the compulsion gives, or who gives the compulsion, and then suddenly, the next chapter is, well, the next several chapters are just an entirely different story that reveals it. And then it goes back to, to the original story, never bringing up that, that, that one story ever again. And I just, that's what, because that's how you gotta look at it. You gotta look at it like that, because that's what this is to a reader. A blog is basically like a book, but on the, on the computer. I mean, it off, it's a bit different from a book, because, because there are comments, and the comments can have more of an impact. I've, I've learned to appreciate comments more, so comments can have more of an impact. So that's different for that. But this, but still, the reading experience, you still got to look at it like it's a book. You can't just suddenly dump a, another blog on, on us without any build-up to it. Or without... Like, ugh. I don't know. That's that's probably the only complaint I have. Well, and the typos. As Tasha Lane brought up, there were typos in this. Quite a, quite a number of them. But then again, they're just typos. Uh, anything else? I think that's pretty much it. So yeah, that was Eccentrically Bored and Hidden in the Trees, written out loud for Legstep like Radio. Next time we can... no clue what the hell we're going to do, but oh, one of these days I'll, I'll, I'll probably read the rest of the gr the Grand Game Mythos. No. Verse. There we go. <laughs> grand Game Verse. Because th these are two blogs in the Grand Game Verse, which is like six blogs by Lizard Bite, I think. Is it five or six? There's also Ink, a Tangled Web... There might be another one. I know there's 13th Apostle, but there might be another one after. Uh, not after. Uh, might be another one as well as that. But, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll probably do that when 13th Apostle is over. Because of the last one and stuff. And I'll, I might be the Hunter out loud as well. But, uh, what else is there? Shit. 
And of course, there's always a chance that I'll read more of my own blogs out loud. Wouldn't mind reading Plan 31 out loud. But, right. So, yeah. Hope you enjoyed following along with this, or reading it, or... I hope you enjoyed me yelling at commenters. Actually, you know, let me go check to see if that one guy replied to that Rapture comment. No, I, I'll, I mean, I'll even, I don't even remember what post it was, so I guess we'll just do that some other time. But yeah, hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.